morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. It's cold, but it's still beautiful weather. I want to thank you all for joining us as we officially break ground on the Melrose Public Library Renovation Project. As someone who, like many of you in the audience, I suspect, is someone who grew up here in Melrose, and I raised my kids here. I'm going to get used to saying not raising my kids here because they're both adults. Uh, the Melrose Public Library, and this moment in particular, is very, very special to me. It's very close to my heart. Uh, libraries, as you all know, are a great community connector. They connect people to information, and they connect people to one another. They are educationally imperative, and they are culturally meaningful for the communities they serve. In the walls of public libraries, relationships are built, and memories and history are made. Ideas are exchanged and culture is shifted. They are the only institutions where information is free and accessible to everyone. This library, the Melrose Public Library, has always exceeded these expectations. But our library is also a community meeting space, a job search center, a place where children come to learn, socialize, and grow, and a place where people can gather and build relationships that they might not otherwise have the opportunity to do. And sometimes it's just a quiet place to be to yourself. It is often one of the first places new residents talk about or we hear about from when they visit our city. It's a center for literacy and history and our future. It offers robust programming for people of all ages and abilities. And it's also, perhaps most importantly in the times we live in, an institution that keeps democracy in our community alive. I'm not usually a big fan of quotes, but I do want to quote President Kennedy when he said, if this nation is to be wise as well as strong, if we do achieve our destiny, then we need more new ideas for more wise people reading more good books in more public libraries. These libraries should be open to all except the censor. We must know all the facts and hear all the alternatives and listen to all the criticism. Let us welcome controversial books, controversial authors, and controversial ideas. For the Bill of Rights is the guardian of our security as well as our liberty. Well, Jack Kennedy was Irish born, was Harvard educated, so what he said was kind of, was, was very high minded, but very, very, very important. What he ultimately said was, public libraries underpin the hidden infrastructure that supports our democracy. Libraries offer information, but they don't interpret it. Now, there may be a book on the shelf arguing one thing and a book with an opposing idea right next to it. The books battle it out in a sense, but they present readers with facts and allow them and encourage them to form their own opinions make their own decisions. This is democracy in action right here in Melrose. And although the first Massachusetts Public Library was founded in 1848, the core principles that public libraries were founded on have not changed over time. If anything, they've become more important. However, the tools that libraries provide and the way they provide these education and other resources must change, must keep up with the times. Why are we doing this? Because we want a library, we want a resource, we want a community center for the next 100 years. This project that we are starting today is more than an investment in a building. It is an investment in our community, an investment that will benefit every single Melrosian and our friends and surrounding communities for generations to come. And I couldn't be more excited to be here with all of you for the launch of this project. Now, next up, it is my honor to introduce my friend and successor, the state representative from the 36th Middlesex, our own state representative, Representative Kate Lipper Garbedian. Good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year. It's so nice to see you all here. As the mayor said, I'm Kate Lipper Garabedian, the state representative for Melrose. And I'm glad to represent a community that's so committed to our public library as a critical community institution. 
My uh, Senate counterpart, Senator Lewis, is here with us in spirit today. I know he's equally excited about this project. As a lifelong reader, as the daughter of two journalists, as a former middle school teacher, and as the mother of two school-aged boys, I submit to you that there's no institution more important and frankly more American in our community than our public library. It's a place, as the mayor said, where each of us individually can go to pursue our independent interests and pursuits. It's a place where our community can gather together to build collective strength. The library's very mission is to support learning and inspiration. I frequently take Harrison and Oscar to this library and to our new satellite one, and I love watching them peruse the shelves and identify new treasures to bring home with them. In the COVID environment, I somehow discovered audiobooks, so I'm now a daily patron of the library. There's not a day that goes by that I don't click on my Libby app as a mom on the go to listen to an audiobook, to immerse myself in new information or in a new place and time. As state representative, I've been proud to host office hours at the library, and I look forward to continuing to do that. I also was pleased to raise up the perspective of public libraries during my community conversation series last year on a community conversation on lifelong learning. And I'm really thinking today at this spot of one of the first things I did as state representative, which was to prepare a citation from the House of Representatives to honor Mary Ann Stanton, who had been our longtime director of children's services. The city put together a beautiful celebration on a warm May afternoon, or maybe it was morning, and scores of families with their children drove by, biked by, walked by with balloons and flowers, posters and shouts of appreciation. It was the perfect encapsulation of how important libraries and the librarians who lead them are to our daily lives and to our families. So today, this groundbreaking is another testament to the importance of a public library, a recognition of our city's real commitment to it. Private citizens leading and supporting fundraising efforts. Our Melrose elected officials dedicating local dollars to the project. The staff of this building and at City Hall overseeing the design and implementation of the program. Your state delegation and our library commissioners for dedicating state dollars to support the effort. Even Congress and President Biden, the American Rescue Plan included money that we are using to support this building. At the state level each year, as members of the legislature, Senator Lewis and I direct significant tax dollars to the Massachusetts Public Library Construction Program, which aids municipalities like ours with capital investments in its libraries. It's incredibly rewarding then to see a library here in our district benefit from the statewide funding and we want to thank the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners for the more than eight million dollars of state grant money coming to us. The last time I spoke here was just in the fall when we celebrated another state grant program, half a million dollars for the decarbonization efforts that are being led here. Again, the state support for this project is just one piece of a remarkable collaborative effort. Like the mayor, I want to thank everyone who's made this project possible, Mayor Broder and his team, including the library's executive director, Linda Gardner, the Melrose City Council, I see President Jennifer Grigoritis and Councilor Ryan Williams with us today, the library commissioners at the state level, our library board of trustees here in Melrose, the Melrose Public Library Building Committee, the friends of the Melrose Public Library Board, and so many countless residents, including I think probably all of you here today. So thank you so much and how exciting to be with you. Thank you, Representative, uh, for your hard work. The Sassu and Senator Lewis really have been tremendous advocates for a whole raft of funding services, including the uh, the bonding money that is necessary to get these physical plant projects to the finish line. It now gives me great pleasure to give a warm welcome to Massachusetts Library Commissioner Mary Ann Cluggish. Mary Ann. <laughs> Thank you. I am truly honored to be here today for this joyous event. On behalf of the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, may I say a hearty congratulations, Melrose. You know, this groundbreaking is the harbinger of so many great things to come. A day that will be exceeded only by your grand opening. I think a groundbreaking is a good time to make some predictions, don't you? So. I predict 
that a year or so from now, you'll all be here and you'll be saying things like, can you how believe how fabulous the building is now? It seems so much bigger. Look at all the technology. Did you see the new meeting rooms? Don't you love the new children's room? And how about that new young adult room? And a few of you might be saying, why did we wait so long? <laughs> well, we know why cities and towns wait so long. This is a big deal. It's not easy to find the money to renovate and build an addition onto a town building, especially a library. But Melrose has done it right. Under the leadership of your trustees and especially your library director, Linda Gardner, the library staff, and before that, the vision of many others. Thanks to Mayor Brodeur for his leadership. I remember sitting next to him at a legislative breakfast about 10 years ago and being very impressed with his knowledgeable and eloquent remarks supporting libraries. And let's not forget that resounding yes votes of your city council. And now I get to say that nothing makes the MBLC happier than to be than to able to award a well-deserved grant and now for Melrose a construction grant of about eight million dollars. I personally believe that the building or renovating of any library, big or small, is an affirmation of some of the principles this country was founded on. The freedom of speech and ideas, a renewal of our commitment to equal access to information for everyone, no matter their age, gender, or station in life. Access to information and dissemination of ideas is critical to a free and dynamic society, which is fundamental to what libraries are about. You know, Andrew Carnegie must have seen something in Melrose's potential back in 1904 to build this building. So I'd like to close with my favorite Andrew Carnegie quote. He said, a library outranks any other one thing a community can do to benefit its people. It is a never failing spring in the desert. Thank you. See you at the grand opening. Thank you, Commissioner. I, I should have used the Carnegie quote. That's a good one. <laughs> so I am very grateful to all of you who have joined for us today. As folks have pointed out, this is um, a, a project of many hands over a very, very, very uh, long term. So there, are, there are many people at the front end of the project um, that we might not necessarily hear about or hear from, but everyone in this community has a stake in this library, and there were so many leaders that, that had us, that had the wherewithal and the support to get here. This is the only project of its type in a municipality, at least that I'm aware of, where significant private dollars, we ask for donations to support a public building. We certainly don't do that uh, for City Hall or our other municipal buildings, our schools, our police and fire, but residents not only pay through their tax bills, but they also pay out of their own pockets very, very generously. And that includes the substantial support, over $2 million, from our local board of trustees. And I really want to point that out and thank you all very much for that. Um, so certainly our delegation, the commissioners at the state level, our city council is both past and present that have supported this project our own Board of Trustees of the library, uh, the friends of the Melrose Public Library, uh, the municipal building consultants, uh, certainly the folks from Taipei Architecture who are with us today, and again, most importantly, the, the thread that you can trace throughout this entire process is Linda Gardner, our director. So Linda. I am comfortable to say that I, I wish I could say this about myself, but I can definitely say about Linda, this would not have happened but for the presence and the hard work and the dedication of Linda Gardner. Now, it's time to break new ground. I would love to have everyone come up 
but we just can't do that. We have a premium on shovels, and we're trying to, you know, control the cost. So I'd like to invite up Linda, State Representative Caitlin Bergarabedian, our City Planner Denise Gaffey, our Architect, the President of the firm, Charlie A, our Municipal Building Consultant President Pat Sayada, our Chair of the Melrose Board of Trustees Carol Hoffman, and Commissioner Marianne Cloggish. Do we have any shovels left? <laughs> I'll take a hard hat. Yep. How are we doing for shovels? I want to make sure we got enough shovels. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jen and Ryan, if you'd like to come up. <laughs> All right, you're going to have to circle around the pile. <laughs> Raj is in charge from now on. Thank you. 